I think the most common mistake is leaving out what, what I would loosely call middle managers. The people from the first line development and QA and te uh, managers up through directors and even in, in large companies that sort of the lower tier VPs. Um, because what happens is um, done well, the CEO, the CXOs are all going to be behind it. They've given it the green light. They've put up some budget. They've said, yes, we're going to take, make some changes. We're going to get much better results. We're going to do all this stuff. Let's bring in the trainers and let's get all the teams in the room and let them learn all the stuff. And the teams all learn about being self-organizing and how they don't need managers anymore. And they get to make their own decisions and make their commitments and meet them. And, then, and nobody puts the managers in a room and says, by the way, your teams now have a different set of expectations and they need different things from you. You know, you're not, we used to pay you for having all the answers. We used to pay you for recognizing the problems and figuring out how to solve them and then telling everyone how to do it. And now we don't want you to do that anymore. We want you to do something else. We want you to somehow nurture this stuff in your team and make sure they do the right thing without telling them how and all these other kind of squishy concepts that, that aren't necessarily obvious especially if you've been a manager for 10 or 20 years and you've learned how to take action and be a, and do command and control and do it successfully, right? So uh, leaving those folks out, I think, is probably the single biggest problem in large-scale adoption and large-scale projects because everyone's there, they're involved, and they feel like they need to do something. And a lot of times doing the wrong thing is worse than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And when they, they start doing that, and it, it's, it causes friction and upset and, and just kind of... Screws, screws, things, uh, um, screws things up a little bit. So I have a story back from when I first started to teach Agile uh, back at my company before Rally. And um, somebody came in and said that they had, they had given the pitch for doing Scrum to their boss. And the boss said, wow, that sounds great. I'm really excited. Said, like, when can we start? He said, well, really? I, I can go, I can take it, I can do this new thing, it's all right? And the boss said, oh yeah, absolutely. When can I see your new Gantt chart? Right? So there's a case of a boss asking the wrong question, being totally supportive, yet asking the wrong question. And if you don't, for the, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Gantt charts are something we don't use in Agile. We use those in traditional waterfall project management. So that's a hysterically funny joke to an Agile person, um, or a hysterically funny story. The point being, even a manager who wants to help can easily do the wrong thing. And when you get people in a situation where they're still used to saying yes, boss, mm -hmm. they'll go off and do the wrong thing and then wonder why they're having trouble doing Scrum mm -hmm. or doing, some, doing XP or whatever agile process they put in place because the support isn't correct. It's, it's heartfelt, but I'm, I'm not helping you by giving you, you know, last year's tools. So it really is important to get those people aligned. And I think that's the biggest thing.